Greetings everyone, welcome to question 2 of the 2019 um, organic exam paper. So let's get started uh, with this question. So the first question looks at, um, the first part of question 2 looks at the idea of inanimous. So we covered it um, in question 1. Um, so if you just came back from that, you should be able to understand this carbon right here is what we call the chirocarbon because it is bonded to four different type of atoms okay so when we draw in atoms and people always ask me does it really matter because we will draw it um i i normally draw it like this let's let's do it um, a little bit different it doesn't really matter um so if you're staring at the exam you're probably wondering hey if you look in the marking series like you draw this differently to what the exams look like well it doesn't matter the first one doesn't matter because you can draw it however you want like pointing out you know up the right into the page out of the page it doesn't matter it's what's on the other side that matters you have to make sure that these two diagrams that you just draw are mirror images of each other of each other so inanimous are the really easiest one to do i personally feel like it's much easier compared to um optical ice uh, what is system trans isomers in year 12 like you have to explain this one is just drawing and then explain how you could distinguish the um these two isomers um because these inanimous and 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 before i go into that just remember if you get stuck in the exam on inanimous look at your hands Put your hands on the desk and look at them. They are mirror images of each other. They are exactly the same, but they are mirror images. They're non-superimposable and they are optical isomers. So how do we distinguish them? So we just shine um, plain the polarized light through them. The enantiomers will, will rotate the plane of polarized light in opposite directions okay so um, I was just reading a Facebook um, post from a from a chemistry teacher on Facebook just now you know um, complaining about how much time we need to go through this um, and questioning people's ability in physics if you do physics but just remember the enantiomers will rotate the plane of polarized light polarized light in opposite directions now if you really this is a magical phrase but if you want to know what polarized light is just think about sunglasses some some sunglasses are polarized i mean if you youtube some um, animations they're really good ones i'm not gonna try to do it here through a video um just too hard i prefer to use some animations as my background but um you know time's limited let's move on okay so here's the answers if you want to look for it so the ability to rotate the plane polarized polarized light um, oops, um, and the enantiomers will rotate the plane polarized light to the left, and where the other one rotates. So rot rotate in opposite directions. That's what we want you to say. Next one, a uh, flowchart question. How convenient. So this is an excellence question. So this is where I strongly recommend people. You know, at level two. Um, I always say to them, organic is a paper you don't want to, you know, SNA, or it's a, it's a paper that you don't want to pay um, special attention to. In really, really, especially if you're trying to do um, level three chemistry like you're doing right now, organic is the key, okay? Because if you don't know year 12 reactions, you are not going to be at a good place at year 13. This is a year 12 reaction. This is a year 12 reaction. This is a year 12 reaction, the year 13 stuff. And so the reagents, that's all year 12. Okay, so half of this is year 12. So because we can test you anywhere in the year 12 and year 13 organic flowchart. So here we go. I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but um, this is KOH ALK. Remember, you sometimes, and then you have um, over here, you have KOH AQ. And this is where people get confused. They're like, oh, I have KOH, ALK, and AQ. Which one's which? Which one does substitution? Which one does um, elimination? Just remember the conditions. One is ALC, alcohol, one's AQ. I tell my guys, you know, if you're dissolving alcohol, you tend to be drunk. And when you're drunk, you lose stuff. When you lose stuff, you eliminate. 
you get eliminated or you lose things like wallets and cell phones and credit cards while you're drunk you know don't know, don't ask me how i know this um and then koh aq this is aqueous so if you drink a lot of water aqua you know if you drink a lot of water you replace the body fluid inside you and you need to go to the bathroom so that's replacing your body fluid so that's substitution okay so when you um, this is how I tell people to remember, nice and easy. But alcohol, so what does that do? You remove the CL and you remove one of the fol uh, one of the H's nearby. Poor gets poor. Um, as you can see, that was an excellence question in year 12. This one is just part of a flow chart. Okay, so we want the minor product. So we, you know, when you're removing the CL, it is more likely to lose a hydrogen from the neighboring carbon that has less H's. So it is more likely to lose hydrogen from here, um, less likely to lose from here. So we want the minor product, so it's gonna look like this. It's gonna be CH3, CH2, um, double bond is CH2, and you make but one in. okay? Now we add HCl into the solution, so I'm gonna do this a little bit neater because this is not part of the answer, I just want to show you uh, the next step. Yeah, adding HCl, we want the minor product again. So what's gonna happen is that when you put HCl in this, what's gonna happen, you always break your double bond. You break your double bond, and then you have a choice. You can either add the H here, add the Cl here, or you can do the opposite, add the H here, add the Cl here. Which one's major, which one's minor? Um, the top one is minor because this is the opposite it is more likely when you're removing carbon when you're adding things into the carbon carbon double bond you break the double bond then the hydrogen will be attracted more likely to be bonded to the carbon with more hydrogen so the minor product is when the hydrogen is bonding to the carbon with less hydrogen bonded to it okay so we are going to have um we are going to have this Okay, so one chlorobutane. Let's move on. Now, substitution, we have KOHAQ, so this is what I meant. You replace a CL with the body fluid or with the water you just um, water you just drank. You get that. Then you made you make alcohol. This is how again, this is how you can check. I mean, how would you make a carboxylic acid? You learned this from year 12. Prime it has to be a primary alcohol. So how do we do this? You can use MNO4 minus H plus. If you want, you can use Cr2072 minus H plus. Just pick one. You don't have to, don't write them both because that wouldn't be correct. And then something happened, then something happened. All right, so let's just finish the top of the flow chart first. Okay, so same thing here. Again, you can work backwards. Look at that and look at that. The only difference is this is a Cl on the first carbon. This is an NH2 on the first carbon. And you can find the answer in, one, in question one that we just did because I just did it just now. In H3 alcohol, and you need this concentrated because you replace a Cl with the nitrogen. So this was the same concept tested in question number one. So it's kind of double dipping. So if you didn't know how to do it just now, you wouldn't know how to do it now. with the question one. You wouldn't know how to do this now. Okay, but this is substitution, and this is how you can check. Like say if you accidentally did it wrong. Like say if you put the Cl here, how the heck are you going to replace the Cl, which is on the second carbon? and then with the nitrogen on the first carbon, it doesn't work, okay? So this is like a safety check, you can come back and check it, okay? Next one. Now, this is reagent three. So we made something which then reacted with the amine and then I made the amide. Now, the key thing that I've, again, emphasized in question number one is you need to look here. Are there any catalysts or reagents required? No. Okay, so make a note to yourself. There's no reagents, no catalyst, no heat, nothing is required. That means this thing here must be acyl chloride because it's so reactive, it doesn't need any of these. Okay, so you need to make sure that you understand. Like say if I change this, like if I say H plus slash water, you know, acid, um, you know, conditions, da, 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 then it wouldn't be acyl chloride. Because if you had acyl chloride, you wouldn't need any of those. So this tells me that this must be acyl chloride. So you can do this two ways. You can either work it out this way from top to bottom. 
So we know it must be acyl chloride, so we just change the COOH to COCl. How do I get there? SOCl2. Okay, or you can go back the other way, which is quite good, considering if we're going to do polymers next. So this, you can think of this as an introduction. I all just cut here. You look for the CON bond. This is so easy to do. Look for the CON or COO ester bond. Look for the single bond in the middle. Cut. This thing on the right is that. This thing on the left is that. You're missing components um, because you, the CL and the one of the H's want to make the condensation reaction then become the, the byproduct. But then you can find the bulk of the molecules by just cutting it. Okay, but this is the flowchart question from 2019. Very, uh, very nice question, if you ask me. Um, you need all of these right to get um, excellence. So, you know, comparing to writing uh, like 500 words comparison of um, intermolecular forces in structure and bonding, I think this is much easier to do. Okay, all right, next one. So we have another question. So we have C5H10O exists as a number of different of structural isomers. We want to draw the structure isomer that meets the following requirements. So first thing first, we want a straight chain molecule that forms a silver mirror. So straight away, silver mirror, non-negotiable. You need this. And then we can draw this however you want. This is non-negotiable, non-negotiable. And I just do Oh, and then they say straight chain, so it has to be straight chain, so you can't have um, branches. So this is CH3, CH2, CH2. Because it's straight chain, that means you know no no side chains, and silver mirror means it must be an aldehyde. Okay, nice and easy. Next one, um, branch chain. So C5H2. I just had to memorize that formula. All right, so branch chain. So this is a branch. Note here, this is a branch chain molecule that doesn't form silver mirror. When heated with Toland's reagent. Okay, so it is, um, there are quite a few options that you can do. You can draw alkenes with OHs. Uh, let me just, let me just try this. Let's just be a little bit creative. I mean, the most obvious one that I can think of is just to do this. It's a branched, yeah? So it's branched, that means you have to have a carbon branch. That's what the branch means. You need to have a carbon as a methyl group that doesn't form silver mirror i can just do a double bond easy done ketone okay so that doesn't form um so all i did if you're considering what i did with them, the only thing i did different i just moved the c double bond over from the aldehyde to a ketone and then i make sure instead of having five carbons in one chain i put the fourth i put the fifth carbon as a branch that's the easiest one if you want to be creative you can do these five carbons Double one here, and then let's say I just put the O here. If you do the, if you do the math, you should be able to count to. So that's um, that's two, three, four, five plus five. So that's ten hydrogens. So this will work as well. So you don't have to draw the ketone. You can be creative. You can have multiple functional groups. They didn't say you can't have multiple functional groups. So that will work. Okay. Next one. Five carbon ring cyclic structures, yay, exciting. They form steamy fumes, so straight away, when I see uh, with cyanol chloride. Um, so you have to have, I almost got really happy there because I saw steamy fumes, I thought it was gonna be acyl chloride straight away, but then you didn't react with water, you reacted with cyanol chloride. So that means you had something and then you turned into a COCl, okay? Because that's what says COCl2, it turns a, um, in an OH group um, into yeah, when reacted with cyanide chloride. Uh, not necessarily, you don't need to, my apologies, you don't necessarily need to have this because um, the steamy fumes could be quite a few other things like say HCl, you could make HCl with um, alcohol and cyanide chloride, that's definitely a possibility, okay? So you don't have to make that, I was getting a little bit um, trigger happy with the steamy fumes um so let's um get back to the question so five carbon rings so i'll just go one oops that's not that's a rubber one two three four five you can draw a pentagon like this so steamy fumes and if you read the question you have to have c5h10o so you have you have to have 
one oxygen and the only logical functional groups if you didn't know this before it must be an alcohol because you can't fit anything else into the structure other than alcohol so if you react this with cyanochloride what's going to happen is that you will replace the OH with a Cl then you make HCl and then that's going to be um, sorry the H2O um, that's going to be your steamy fumes all right so let's look at the last one straight chain secondary so straight chain keywords straight chain secondary alcohol that decolorizes bromine water can exist as both cis and trans oh my lord this is this is everything you know this this molecule is amazing can do all those things so it's a straight chain secondary alcohol so let's do this first so it's a straight chain straight chain means everything is in one line it's a secondary alcohol and de so secondary alcohol that's what that means decolorized bromine water you have to have cc double bond can form cis and trans isomers so that's here 12 in enantiomers you have to have a chiral carbon so let's trial and error i can't put the double bond here because that will give me ch2 so that wouldn't give me chiral carbon so let's reverse so the only possibility stupid like get rid get rid um i have to put the double one here because if i had to put the double one here like say right now you know just a bit of recap on year 12 chemistry this would have um system trans isomers because they have the cc double one tick the two groups bonding to each carbon are different if you look at those four different groups they're different like say you have the h and ch3 on one side you have the h and ch2 ch3 on one side and that's a tick as well so this will work in terms of the cis and trans isomers now let me do the oh first uh do i do the oh now so i can't put the oh here if i put the oh here that's an that's a uh, primary alcohol um i can't do that here um because the double bond makes it really tricky you, you you don't you don't have this you're not just recreating some really weird um, function group that doesn't exist okay so the OH group has to be either here or here or here um, it wouldn't be here for the same reason if you put the OH group here that's not a secondary alcohol that's a primary alcohol so that wouldn't fit there so the OH group has to be here so this is your structure it will be CH3 C H C H C H oh c h3 so let me check again straight chain done secondary alcohol oh group bonded to a carbon which is bonded to two other carbons done decolorizes bromine water alkene done exists as both cis and trans isomers done it here done it occurs um exists in enantiomers where's the chiral carbon right here the c is bonding to four different groups h ch3 oh and then this whole lot okay and that will give you the excellence okay so again um very difficult to study um but hopefully that's why when i'm going through these i tend to do a little bit more than what the question is asking you all right now hopefully you found this helpful um like always subscribe leave a like um share with your friends and um study hard and i'll see you guys next time bye bye